All right, and now we are recording. Um, so, hello everyone. My name is Connor. I'm with the Gitcoin team. Uh, we have a few people from the Mysterium team here to talk about their can't be censored uh, challenges, as well as their their bounties in the funding the future hackathon. Um, so, everyone, thank you so much for joining us. And we are working on mysterious bounties, and we've partnered with Gitcoin over here for funding the future. Um, to drive more open source development on our project Mysterium Network. We're building a decentralized distributed open permissionless network and um, we're looking at working with you guys to build more consumer level applications. I'd like to introduce Antanas who is going by Zolia today and Yaro who is um, also in the call. So Antanas does um, leads our network and is our CTO and Yaro is our head of product over at Mysterium Network. So all your questions, they will, you are in very safe hands. Hi everyone. Thank you for gathering here. Uh, nice to see so many people here. Uh, we really appreciate you coming here just to listen what you have to say. And um, uh, our main topic here is to explain what you can do with Mysterium Network and how you can do it. Start, yeah, with a short introduction. And then with questions. Uh, so I, I'm going to share my screen. Can you see my screen, guys? Yep. Yeah. Cool. So, um, what is Mysterium? It's a network, a distributed network of nodes which are providing VPN service in exchange for cryptocurrency. So usually people uh, look to VPN service as something you, either you're running your own, either you're buying account in some centralized uh, company, uh, and, uh, and then you're using their servers to uh, exit uh, somewhere in the internet. The problem with that approach is that uh, that centralized place still can have uh, access uh, to the uh, exit locks and many other issues. And in terms of Mysterium, we do have the pool of people who are launching different uh, kind of uh, uh, nodes. That could be data center nodes, that could be nodes on Raspberry Pis at their home, that could be uh, exit node uh, run on their computer and available just uh, while they are not using internet or something like that. And, um, and uh, actually, the moment we already have uh, it on testnet, we are going, we are working uh, very hard to go to mainnet uh, this summer or earlier. Uh, but even if at the moment, 600 active providers. Sometimes we have 800 active providers, uh, which are providing uh, exit uh, uh, pools. Most of them are in UK, United States, Italy, uh, Germany, uh, as you see on maps, those dots. But actually we do have exit nodes in many places uh, all around the globe. And we do have users. Uh, at the moment we have about 10,000 people who are already using. And we don't do active promotion at this stage because we, we would like to build first uh, prepared product for people to use, but still people are finding us somehow and they are using it. So it's proving uh, and it's giving us big, big hope that we are doing something very useful. Uh, it's interesting to see that most users are from India, Iran, Pakistan, Indonesia, United Emirates, uh, Arab uh, Emirates, uh, Turkey, China. So the whole all places where you could imagine that they have problems with uh, governments and different limitations uh, could be there. Uh, India, it's a little bit surprising, but uh, still. And um, the aim of our network is to have residential, mostly residential nodes, but still data center nodes also are possible. Why residential nodes? Because uh, there are many services when you go uh, to, to, to use them, which will try to detect if you are not VPN user. And if, for example, somebody is traveling and uh, would like to watch Netflix, uh, BBC from outside of UK, for example, 
uh, he, he is not able to reach that. And if you, he will use just data center node or he will use centralized VPN, most probably BBC will still say that that's a VPN service and it's not available for you. But via Mysterium exit nodes, which are mostly at homes for, uh, of people homes, uh, it's totally possible. And uh, let's, let's move a little bit forward. So this network has a couple of components uh, main main infrastructure things. So we do have uh, consumers and providers. So uh, what is consumer? It's a client application, you would think. But actually, our uh, software uh, we, we we do have the wrapper on GitHub called Node. Uh, it's a software written in GoLang, and uh, that's a, a software which could be run in a, a consumer mode or in provider mode. And actually consumer applications could be built different ones and they can use this node software uh, as a library. I will talk a little bit later about that. And provider nodes also could be run in Linux machines, maybe on Mac machines. They could have inter a UI interface or common, a common line interface, but still uh, those interfaces will be using uh, this uh, node implementation. And uh, while consumer is connecting to provider, first he's doing discovery and watching for available providers on the network and is able to filter out providers by country, by type of IP, for example, residential or just IP with big bandwidth. And maybe I don't care to, to have residential IP, but I need better speed performance. And then they are establishing a VPN tunnel. At the moment we support two protocols, but actually our software can support a couple of different protocols. We support OpenVPN and WireGuard uh, protocols, um, but it's extendable. It could be also proxy, Socket5, it could be even Tor. <laughs> so, so, so you could uh, try to use VPN when you need VPN, like exit to Netflix. And when you want even more privacy, you, you have one additional hope. Uh, and uh, there is a, something uh, we call Hermes Hub, because uh, actually we are using, for payments, we are using a um, second layer solution on top of Ethereum blockchain. It's somehow similar to how Lightning Network works, uh, just simplified model adapted to our cases. And uh, Hermes, uh, uh, it's a, uh, hub through which uh, with which uh, consumers and providers are establishing payment channels i will talk a little bit more about payment infrastructure later uh, our most useful like uh, uh, currently we have one client application uh, ready to use it's a mo mobile android application uh, it's also open source uh, and uh, you can find uh, in our github uh, just go github.com slash Mysterium Network and here you will find Mysterium VPN mobile and here you can get, uh, get the code of our mobile application. You can extend it. It's an open source license uh, and uh, you, you can use it uh, or, or contribute to us. Um, it's especially could be interesting for people who would like to jump into challenge to adapt it to uh, TVs because one of our challenge is make our mobile application uh, feasible for uh, Android TVs. So it's mostly playing with screen resolutions and stuff like that. It's a very good task to start. And it's also a good solution for people who would like to watch those streaming services via Mysterium Network. And uh, so uh, in our Android application, like, and there are two ways how you can use our Node software. Uh, one is as using our uh, node as a library, static linking with it, as we do in our mobile application. So in general, uh, in general, we 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 we, ha we have published uh, on like this Maven package, which uh, with different node versions, which uh, you can. Uh, import into your Kotlin or J Java code or mobile code. And then you are able to access uh, some functions exposed from our node. 
for example, if we would go to our node repo, uh, we, 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 we can try to find like mobile. And uh, here there are a couple of entry points. Uh, for example, uh, you can like, you can get proposals. Uh, uh, that means connecting, uh, as uh, previously was uh, stated, uh, your consumer app, you're calling that API, go, going to discovery, getting proposals from providers, and showing the list of those proposals. Uh, so that's, uh, and then you have one binary application and it it's works very nice. The maybe limitation for that is that you, you need to build native applications. And for those people who would like to build not exactly native application or they are not able to use static linking in their software, we do have API, RESTful type of API. We call it Tequila API. Uh, we will provide uh, more like links to all those documentations, uh, but there is a Tequila API uh, documentation uh, where you, like in general, when you're running Node software, uh, it's uh, on local host on port uh, 4050. It exposes this API where you 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 can get session sta status. You you, you, you can get uh, uh, authentication things. Uh, your current connection. Uh, and like. It's, it's, it's fairly easy. It's, it's as you usually use any APIs. It just will be run in the same node. And to help people to understand how to work with that, because our strategy uh, is to build layered solution. So we as a team would like to work on base layer, on the main components as a node itself, as a discovery service, and we are hoping, uh, and we are building also infra layer, uh, in infrastructure layer. So some kind of filters or this account, like this Hermes hub for payment solution. Uh, but end user applications ideally uh, should be built as we envision by other people. So we are providing two reference implementations as our Android application and our uh, working now on desktop application. Uh, one moment, I will show you for you. Yeah, this one. Uh, so, uh, uh, Mysterium Network, Mysterium uh, VPN desktop uh, uh, application, which has some uh, instructions how, how, how it works. Uh, and uh, I, I, the idea is that uh, you can spin up either electron application. In our case, we are using uh, uh, Node Qt, like the uh, JavaScript library, which is uh, uh, help you to build Qt interfaces with JavaScript. And uh, when this application is starting, it's also in background running the Mysterium Node process. And then uh, so, so it's a desktop app which is running node process and it's running one more process we call supervisor. Uh, it's, it's, it's a background process which is checking if the node itself is up or down. It can, if something is happening with uh, this uh, node process, supervisor will uh, try to launch it again. So that your UI would have the access to, to your, uh, like, uh, to, to the node itself all the time. And finally, it uh, could be built as binary and provided to end user as a uh, binary. So there are document some documentation how the, uh, it works. And it's built with a uh, uh, React user interface, fairly easy to read code for people uh, who usually use React because you can see all the logic how it's using, maybe you will have to learn this uh, React node GUI, which is a little bit different than Electron, but for people who would like to spin off any kind of different things, that could be very good. Also a, a reference implementation, how to build on top of Mysterium network. Yes. 
and I would like to explain a little bit more how our payments works and why this way, not another. So the the problem of blockchain micropayments, like in, in such a solution as Mysterium, you have providers and consumers. And it's not very possible that consumer will pay in front for provider because they don't know each other. So if consumer would pay subscription for one month for the network, providers could just disappear and get his money. If you will pay one hour in front, it, you can just disappear. But also provider is not able to give you service uh, with uh, like not getting payment. So if provider would say, okay, connect to me after you will finish your session, you will pay me. Uh, it's also not true because then consumer can disappear and the provider will never get payments. So we have to charge uh, really often. Uh, at the moment we are charging each minute. So providers are trying to charge each min minute for consumer. And when we are talking about charging, we mean, uh, we mean that we are charging super small amounts, like 0 0.005 cent if that would be in usd amount yeah so it's a super small transactions uh blockchains are cool secure censorship resistant have open permissionless apa but that would be totally impossible for us to use it paypal also is not an option because they are charging 25 cents per transaction so we needed something and like blockchain would be too slow like you need settlement time and we need like instant settlements. So, so, so you, like you can wait a couple of seconds, but not more. Uh, because when I look on some other so, uh, solutions, some of them deciding to go with a strategy that our app is main app and everyone should use that app. Uh, Mysterium is more like e Ethereum itself as a foundation. You know? like in Ethereum, you're using different wallets. They are building core node and people are jumping uh, into that by building wallets. And with VPN, it's surprisingly, but already mon monetizable because people are spending billions of dollars yearly on VPN services. Mysterium has been running this larger can't be censored challenge, um, I think since the beginning of March and it goes to about mid April. Uh, and so this will, um, there's 10,000 in cash prizes total. And it has these six categories that I think we kind of touched on briefly, but I would recommend uh, checking that out if, if you're curious. And then for funding the future, uh, we have five different challenges that are very similar, pretty much based off those same prompts. Um, but at the end of this two week event, so on March 30th, uh, we'll, uh, the steering will be giving out one ETH for the winner of each of these challenges. So whoever has the best project in this two week period uh, but on top of that, then you can continue working on it um, for another two weeks and actually have a shot at the full $5,000. One of the sources which uh, we are working, like we, we will be updating and you can get that, Docs Mysterium Network. Uh, also our uh, GitHub, our GitHub is, could be very useful solution. So that's a note. Uh, repo and the uh, uh, reference implementation of Mysterium VPN mobile and Mysterium VPN desktop. For those who would like to look on how it works, that's uh, uh, solutions which you could check, look how they work. So please jump into our discords. Um, Yara is always in discord. We've got a bunch of our core development team in discord. Ask questions over there as you run into roadblocks. We're here to help. We want to hear your ideas. We want to understand what you see as a potential with our network of nodes.